What's going on YouTube, Instagram, and special thanks to Inappropriate Reefer for inviting me and Ryan to uh, share some of our biggest mistakes. Hey, what's up Reefers? This video is going to be a great one. But when you're watching this video, I'm in the process of breaking down the 45 gallon tank and I'm waiting on the delivery for a new big reef tank. And of course we got my son Leon back there cheering us on. Since it looks like a lot of you guys like the secret reef tip video I've done in collaboration with a lot of other YouTubers, today we're gonna do it again. But this time I'm gonna change things up a little bit. Besides roping in a few other YouTubers, I also reach out to a few industry professionals that I really respect to get their biggest mistake in the reefing hobby. I'll be really that different in terms of reefing mistake that we've made. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to stay tuned to this channel because big changes are coming. Without further ado, let's go. What's up coral people? My name is Remy and I run the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel and I am honored to be chosen by the inappropriate reefer to tell you my biggest reefing mistake. I am ashamed. Going back, I was newish to the hobby about six months into a full-fledged reef. It was my 30 gallon cube tank all in one. I had all the beginner corals a beginner could dream of. Duncans, toadstools, shrooms, zoanthids, acans. <clears throat> Sorry, lords. I got you, Jake. Now mind you, this was also the time when water changes freaked me out. Is the salt mixed properly? Does the RODI have zero TDS? Is the water to temperature? Well, I messed up big time. I prepared 10 gallons of RODI water in advance. I popped my heater in the brute can. I also put a circulation pump in there just to keep it moving and to keep that that heat circulating through the water. I went upstairs while it heated up and then I came back down, it was ready to go. So after I drained about 10 gallons, I went ahead and I started refilling the tank. Did anyone catch the essential step that I missed in that story? I forgot to add the freaking salt. I had effectively lowered the salinity to unsafe levels. Thankfully, I caught it almost immediately after I did it, and I went ahead and mixed a super potent salt mix. And after a couple hours of draining and pouring in the high potent salt mix and draining, I got it back to normal. Now I have this sign by my mixing station, so I know never to forget the salt. All right, shameless plug time. Make sure to join the Bahama Llama Coral Party on YouTube. Thank you, Moki, and thank you, Inappropriate Reefer, for having me on this video. Happy holidays, everyone. Hey, guys, how do I turn this light on to 100%? Oh, wait, I'm just kidding. All right, well, some of the biggest mistakes we've made in the past, lighting. So a lot of us, you know, we used to have metal halides, of course. I mean, if you were in the hobby for a long time, we used to plug them in and just hope that they did well and hope that the corals liked it. Nowadays, with all these new LEDs, um, a lot of us don't know where, where to start. Um, the lighting is just, sometimes it's really powerful. So they go to 100%. Should we do them and just set them at 100%? Um, well, we learned that you shouldn't. At maybe 20% just to start off would be a great place, uh, especially for a lot of the LPS and softies. Um, and just slowly, gradually ramp them up and watch your corals, see how well they do. Um, if you put them at 100%, what you'll end up doing, you'll just fry the corals and in most cases, just kill them. Um, so you don't want to do that. <sighs> Thanks a lot, guys. Hello everyone, my name is Abe. I run an acropora focused channel called Coral Euphoria. In 20 years of reef keeping, hands down the biggest mistake that I ever made was not properly quarantining my corals. Back in 2008 when I first started getting into acropora is when I acquired red bugs. This little mishap made me realize that I could have easily acquired something much worse like acropora eating flatworms. You definitely don't want either of them, but AEFW is way worse. Since many new reefers don't understand just how devastating acropora eating flatworms can be, allow me to use this analogy. In a way, acropora eating flatworms is similar to having type 2 diabetes. <clears throat> and please understand I'm not trying to make light of this very serious human condition, I'm merely just using it to make a point, so hear me out. 
Acropora eating flatworms is similar to diabetes in that you're probably not going to realize until you get it that it is a whole hell of a lot easier preventing it than it is living with it. There are very few people who can ultimately get off their diabetes medication if they're early in their disease progression and if they do a 180 degree lifestyle change. But again, this is very rare. Reefers similarly can rid their systems of acropora eating flatworm infestations by doing things like removing the infected corals, quarantining them, dipping them regularly, blowing off the flatworms daily, and having a bunch of predators around like wrasses to keep their numbers in check. But the truth is, is that most people end up breaking down their tank, sadly. And just like how diabetics can live a pretty normal life if they manage their diabetes well, Reefers with Acropora eating flatworms can also have a decent tank if they're good about keeping the AFEW in check. But again, that is no easy task. In both cases, if you ask them, they would tell you that if they can go back in time, they would have made better choices in the past to avoid it altogether. Preventing Acropora eating flatworms is not as straightforward as many people think because dips are simply not 100% reliable. If you're curious to know the steps I take for coral quarantine, you can easily find that on my website. Well, all right guys, that's gonna do it for me. I do appreciate the attention and I apologize if you found my diabetes analogy in poor taste. I did consider leaving it out, but I came to the conclusion that if I can keep one person from having diabetes, then it's totally worth it. So please be mindful of what you put into your tanks and be mindful of what you put into your body. Exercise regularly, stay at a healthy weight and chill on the carbohydrates. Hey, what's up, Reefers? Have you ever had MP10, MP40, or gyri pump, or some sort of pump that simply stopped working after a while? Or have you noticed that the magnet expanded, even popping out? Now, the question is, have you been using vinegar to clean your pump? Recently, I came across a thread on Reef to Reef called Vinegar, the Silent Pump Killer. And sure enough, I've experienced all these things. I had MP10 on my side that mysteriously just stopped working. The thing will cease and then turn out the magnet totally expanded. Same thing happened to gyri pump and a couple other pumps as well. Going back a little bit, in the past I've always used vinegar to soak the power heads. And apparently because vinegar is a neutral acid, it penetrates certain type of plastic pretty easily. As a resort, sometimes it causes the magnet to expand and in the process destroying the power head or the wet side. Sometimes the cleaning instructions call the vinegar, usually they call for 50% vinegar, 50% water, and then they do a really short soak. Because after all, it is an acid bath, like if you use too much, it's gonna destroy stuff. If we know that vinegar is bad, what are some alternatives? One is vinegaric acid, which is uh, super powerful, it can clean the pump within like minutes. However, it's also really corrosive, so unless you do it out in open with gloves and stuff like that, do not use it. I feel like it's a little bit too risky. So what I do is actually citric acid. Citric acid is much safer, basically these are the acid you get from like lemonade, orange juice, and stuff like that. Really, really mild. The instruction call for one cup citrus acid to one gallon of alcohol water. So because I don't need that much, I'm just cleaning a tiny little power head, MP10 right here. I'm only doing half a gallon of Audia water and half a cup of citric acid. There's a whole family affair. We got Leon. A mom and a Cameron woman. Professional working mom. We got half a cup of citric acid powder. I got that from Amazon. It was really, really cheap. And also half a gallon of our water. We're gonna mix it well. It's a really, really mild form of acids. Here's the power head. To be honest, like I can probably just use a toothbrush to brush these off, but you know what? I'm just gonna drop it in here and we'll give it a couple hours and we'll come back and see. And citric acid is also really, really forgiving, so you can play around with the mixture. Start out with one cup citric acid and then one gallon of Audi water. Oh, you're pushing me away. <laughs> if you're interested in learning more, do a search. Do a search online called uh, Vinegar Pump Killer. And I think you'll come across the Reef to Reef thread that have all these proofs and all these other people chiming in as well. If you have a situation where your power had just kind of died or the magnet seems to expand and rust and you're using vinegar, chances are the vinegar is destroying your pump. Consider switching over to citric acids. I have destroyed maybe two MP10s, one MP40, and possibly one or two gyri. I wish I noticed a little bit earlier, but hopefully this saves you a couple bucks in buying replacement power heads. All right, on to the next one. Hey everybody, it's Donna with ORA, and I was asked to give a brief uh, explanation and or story 
uh, kind of recapping my biggest reaping mistake and I think it was in 2010 or 2011 uh, I had been reefing for a few years probably at this time and everybody kind of knows that generally in the first year or two of your reefing exploration is when you just cram pack your tank full of all the expensive things that you kind of want to try out and you think you're ballsy enough to do it so uh, by this point my tank was pretty full of pretty expensive pieces and I had been using uh, used tank equipment for a long time. Uh, I think I bought my initial setup uh, used so I had a used heater that I was uh, putting into the system and it wasn't part of my regular maintenance to check in on the cords, check in on the salt creep and any sort of erosion that it was kind of doing to my equipment and uh, I learned the hard way so one day after work I came home and uh, all of my fish were floating at the top and I didn't know why. I thought it was a water quality issue and something happened uh, but what happened, as soon as I stuck my hand in the tank, I kind of realized very quickly uh, that there was a short in my heater and it was frying everything. So all my corals, all my fish, everything was toast and my hand got quite a jolt. So if you don't do it, definitely make part of your maintenance routine, weekly, bi-weekly, even monthly. Uh, just check all those cords, make sure there aren't any splices in it. All right, well, the inappropriate reefer asked me to share my biggest reefing mistake, and I got to tell you for sure, I already know what it is, and it's getting so hung up in the great uh, sand debate. Uh, I took out sand out of an existing tank uh, that had it in it already, and it was the biggest destabilization event like I've ever had in any tank. It took us like at least a year to get past a lot of the most negative elements of it. And I will still have a lot of debate about whether or not sand goes in future tanks for different reasons I won't get hung up on today. But I will never, ever, ever take it out of an existing tank, certainly one that I care about, uh, because I would expect all kinds of negative things to happen, and uh, it is definitely the biggest mistake I've ever made. Hello everyone, and thanks for joining me here on the Eat Sleep Reef channel. And this week, one of my biggest reefing mistakes was actually using the standard PVC cement that a lot of people use. So pretty much if you've ever used that, it sets in about one to two seconds and allows you to really not get everything aligned perfectly. So what I had to do was actually go ahead and find a way to remove the PVC from the actual bulkheads. Now this tip will be great if you're trying to fix an error like that or if you're just trying to convert your stock metric plumbing to American plumbing. So all you really need is obviously to cut as short as you can the PVC to the bulkhead then you're going to need some sort of heat gun. You're going to apply the heat as you're witnessing here to the actual PVC itself and believe it or not it's not going to make any damage to the bulkhead itself. Then get some pliers and take it right out. Now a good way if you are doing PVC and you want something that sets a little bit slower I highly recommend this glue here. I actually bought it at Home Depot and it gives you about 15 seconds to fully set so you allow to get your joints the right angle. Hey y'all. So Here's my share of my worst reefing mistake ever. And this happened about four years ago when I used to have 15 colonies of torches and one 16 head colony got infected. And when it got infected, I tried to save it every day, cutting heads, dipping and iodine, cutting it again um, until the whole colony was dead. And Doing so just spread the bacteria all throughout my tank and infected every single torch colony I had. The least one would be about three, four head colony and the rest would be like 12, 15, 16 head colonies. And that was four years ago. If I didn't try to save that first colony, I would probably still have all those torches. And that's a lot of torches and yeah, so the whole, my, my whole system was mostly torches, so pretty much my tank was empty after then. And that is my worst reefing 
mistake ever. Hey, I'm Jim, Telegram on Instagram, and I think the biggest mistake I made early on was not understanding the importance of good water. First time I filled my tank was with the hose from outside. Dumped in some salt in a heater and called that a salt water tank. Nope. I just didn't get it until I started paying attention to the reverse osmosis deionization units that you can install in your home. If you start with fresh water, if you start with really clean fresh water, then your salt water tank won't suffer a whole lot of the problems that it will if you start with bad water. So low total dissolved solids produced from a nice RODI unit from uh, Marine Depot or Bulk Reef Supply. Take a look at those two. They offer really nice units and you'll start with good water. If you don't want to install something at home, ask a friend. If you don't have that option, talk to your local fish store. They may be able to sell you roadie water or salt water freshly made. Cool. I hope that helps. I'm Jim, Telegram on Instagram. Thanks for watching and be kind everyone. It's already my turn. Holy <laughs> shit, man, just warn me. Oh, <laughs> now I'm ready. Mistake? Nope, never happened. Oh, my nose, my nose, Pinocchio. All right, so yeah, to be honest, I've done many mistakes uh, in the past and funny that you talked about that because in the last uh, month I did a big mistake hope you're gonna learn from that also for the last past uh, two years I think uh, for that thing I've used their Coval Pro from Ritzy I did a water change and I saw my Coval die okay so maybe not all the Coval because there are some still left in my tank look at that and like this Aquapora I did some water test kit to see like what's the parameter and I use like very uh, accurate grade. <laughs> yep. Salt. Yep. This one is pretty high. This one still hurt. So I found out it was not a bad batch, but it was the mix in the salt that was very not spread evenly correctly into the bucket. All you have to do is find technique to mix the salt. I use different technique. Yeah, that's what happens when you try to be salty. Yeah, don't bully yourself. Not a good idea. So there we go. That was my mistake. I didn't mix my salt and this is what happened. So you know what to do. Just find another technique, you know? What's going on YouTube, Instagram, and special thanks to Inappropriate Reefer for inviting me and Ryan to uh, share some of our biggest mistakes. Uh, mine has been a learning curve ever since I started the hobby. So I've probably made every single mistake that you've heard or are going to hear in this little collaboration. Uh, so then it was hard, it was I had to come up with what was my biggest mistake um, because I mean, I haven't quarantined fish before and had crashes. I've put uh, incompatible fish together before. I haven't dipped uh, corals before. Uh, lighting, flow, I mean, I, I run the gamut of all the stuff that I've done wrong, but I've learned from it. Uh, and that's probably the best part is that we all get to learn from, you know, our mistakes. Better yet is if I would have listened or known to like seek out other professionals, guys, people that have been reefing forever, uh, and then just kind of listen to their own mistakes. I probably would have learned ahead of the time and not made the same ones. So 
Kudos to Inappropriate Reefer for putting together this collaboration for uh, all of us that you, some of you know, and maybe uh, some new faces, but for putting us all together and uh, sharing our mistakes so that you don't have to do it yourself. And so what is mine? Well, I talked to the CS team. I talked to all the reefers in the building. I just kind of wanted to pick their brains about what their mistakes were. And uh, there was a reoccurring theme, and it's one that I've also had, so I thought it was really important to bring it up. And as you can tell, it revolves around RODI water and these little $12, $13 float valves that can save your floor, your carpets, your entire house, and your wallet and everything. Before I got an RODI unit, I was going to the grocery store, I was hauling like, you know, the Colgan waters, like three gallons at a time or five gallons lugging them in and out of my house. I was using, you know, that it was reverse osmosis. So it was the closest I could get to the most purified water without buying a system on my own. Finally went and made the purchase, bought my own RODI unit, and like everybody does, or a lot of us do, uh, let me just stick it in this five gallon bucket and I'll come back in an hour and see, uh, you know, if it's full. So I come back in an hour and it's only got like this much water in there. And I was like, oh man, okay. So now I'm just, I'll come back in like two or three hours. Well, you know, you go uh, two or three hours later, you forget that you're filling up a bucket and uh, you go to bed at night. And then you wake up in the middle of the night sitting straight up in bed and go, oh crap, I left the water on. Run downstairs, water everywhere. I mean, that's when you're walking and the floor is soppy before you even get down there. So that's happened to me not once, not twice, not three. I can't even imagine how many times just because I wouldn't go pay 12 bucks to get a float valve that would shut this thing off and I wouldn't have to ever worry about it again. So finally, uh, when I upgraded from filling five gallon buckets of RO water to uh, a full fledged like brute trash can, like a 20 gallon brute trash can, uh, I bought the float valve, I hooked it up and I'll, I'll never go back again. Like there is no reason in the world that you should own one of these and not own one of these. Hopefully you guys don't run into that same issue. Raise your hand if you, uh, I've also experienced that because I'd say a large majority of uh, reefers who are, have been in this for a while uh, have done that to some degree. Just learn from our mistakes and don't do it from the, big, uh, from the beginning. And hey, we'll see you uh, in 2020. I'm sure this will come out like somewhere around the new years. All right, take care. Hey, welcome back guys. I'm gonna speak softly because um, baby's sleeping in the back and it's also been a few days since then and I realized I did not film it close then. <laughs> I, think I hope that you enjoy all the tips that everybody has shared and I have a link to either the YouTube or Instagram account in the first pinned comments below. Be sure to check them out and maybe even subscribe to them. That'd be awesome. Now that you've heard of our biggest reefing mistake, do you have any that you're willing to share? If so, leave a comment below. I would love to read it. I'm sure other people will as well. And we can all just laugh about it, learn about it, and hopefully never make the same mistake again. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. So I know that you like collaborations like this between uh, content creators and I'll do more in the future. And consider subscribing to this channel if this is something that you're interested in watching. Once again, I want to thank all the content creators that helped out in this video. This has been a really fun collab. I learned a lot. I hope you did too. Okay, see you guys next Sunday at 12.30 PM. Bye bye. I think you're the inappropriate reefer, man. <laughs> That's what it's for, right?